So one of the things we find, it's similar to what you and I just talked about, like what are the realities? You know, people see things about prison on TV and things that might seem really simple and mundane to you, but I think all those little things are important too. Um, so, mm -hmm. so especially kids understand the breadth of what, what it's really like. Yeah. How did you guys handle things like a TV? Like, do you have to buy them? What is the whole process? We just sit in here and talk all day, really. Yeah, makes time go by faster. Go sleep. Mm. That's what a lot of people do, but that's just a waste of time, I think. You got a 13-inch TV. It's real small. If you're used to having a 50-inch flat screen at the house, come here and get a 13-inch TV for $167. Outrageous, and then you buy a what is it? A 15 inch TV for $300, $200. They aren't selling these no more. Now they're selling 15 inch flat screens. They cost $100 more for two more inches and a flat screen. Yeah, so you can buy them on commissary. Um, well, now I think they have only flat screens. But when I first got locked up, it was the, the bubble, mm -hmm. the bubble TV that weighed like 30 pounds. And then the flat screen was more, more money. Like when I first got moved in with Ant, or that's what we called him, Ant, um, he had a TV and I didn't. So, you know, I would lay on the edge of my bunk and whatever he watched, I watched. <laughs> and that's just how it was. Well, what what channels can you even watch and what did you watch when you were there because you can't get it's not just like oh i'm gonna watch you know netflix tonight <laughs> right um yeah it was just like a just like a real probably like the most basic cable package like uh, local news channels tnt fx animal planet discovery you know just the the basic channels um when you're doing time at a place like wabash where you have a lot of time in your room you really get into shows like series you know so if you only have one tv and your celly is like a hardcore walking dead fan like that's what you know you're going to be watching sunday night at nine um but usually what happens is because, you know, you have so much time, like before I really got into like studying and working out when I was really into my TV, I had a whole weekly schedule on what I was watching throughout the week at from 10 a.m. to noon was Supernatural. And then at night on you know certain nights it was this other nights it was that so yeah it gets pretty it gets pretty serious with the tv <laughs> has it affected what you watch now now that you can watch anything you want anytime you want i don't even watch tv really no nope. <laughs> because you watched it so much in prison <laughs> well just because i don't have time now look back at the very first interview I did with you and oh, man. <laughs> oh my gosh embarrassing this is not embarrassing it's not actually, embarrassing for me you you are super you were super articulate even way back then okay okay you ready okay you want me to start playing it yeah sure go ahead okay I definitely feel like I've learned a lot more um, just like with slang words like I never knew before just like what people mean when they say certain things and I've just Man. I've become a lot wiser than I was when I first got locked up I mean I've learned a lot more but I wish I would have had a wake-up call like before this you know like because probation how like teenagers like my age 
look at it because I know how we look at it. It's just probation, you know. You got to check in once a month, big deal. Like, well, that can easily turn in from probation to this within a day. All you got to do is screw up one time, just walk in a gas station and take something, and the next thing you know, you're in here. It's crazy to so see. It's really, it really puts, makes you think about everything. Can you even believe that's if you? This is an awakening no. call. Then <laughs> I even sound like a baby. <laughs> you were a baby, Cole. You really were. I know that's crazy. When you when you look at that, is it almost like looking at a totally different person? Oh yeah, for sure. Do you even remember it? Yeah, I remember. Is it is it hard to watch that? Is it funny to watch that? Is it, what what is it? It's kind of embarrassing because I'm used to like the me, you know, now and like I you know, I I can see like I thought I knew I thought I knew things that I didn't know yet. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's crazy to think back to that time and think of all the things that were yet to come and that I just had no idea how I was going to handle yet. But I was acting like everything was all right. You know? Well, there's probably no other way to be at that point. But to try and act like I'm okay. I, I, I think I get this. Yeah. Yeah, that's... And that's why... I've I've gotten complaints from every every woman I've been with so far that I'm just impossible to to read <laughs> like they can't tell they can't tell what I'm what I'm feeling because I don't I don't show it I don't uh, I still don't I don't show what I'm thinking or feeling because that's just what you learn to do, you don't, you don't betray anything to anybody because they'll use it against you, and it just becomes natural. So uh, you just you just sort of shut down, right? You just yeah. You don't show emotion. You don't express emotion. Yeah. Hmm. Do you when you because I know, well I know you had a lot of women writing you when you were in prison. Number one. <laughs> Um, and yeah. you, you had relationships in prison and people often wonder how that's possible. Can you explain dating in prison? <laughs> um, yeah, it's a, it's a real interesting topic. Um, I even wrote a paper on it at one point. Um, so the best way. I can explain it is with with me at least people would write me at first just because you know out of sympathy or whatever like you know for whatever reason or just to say you know hope hope things work out for you whatever well then <laughs> when I would write them back and I was a little more grown up then um, and I was developing my, my, uh, <laughs> my suave nature and my mouthpiece, when they would get a letter back from me, they would be like, Oh my God, like this is not a baby, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> so that was the initial like hook. I guess when they would realize that I was no longer like a baby and we would then start having, you just have so much like 
that's that's another thing I've realized since I've been out. People are shallow out here. So shallow. And I had such the the quality of conversation that I had in prison was so much better than out here. Wow. So much better. And because you had first of all, I had nothing but time. But the people that were writing me, you know, when you sit down and write a letter, it's just much more personal and you can put more thought into it. Mm -hmm. So that right there put me in a headspace, say in a woman's headspace that nobody else was in. Mm -hmm. So from there, it was just, you know, what, I mean, Karen, what do women want? They want to be listened to. They want to be, you know, they want to be talked to sweet and, you know, well, when you're feeling like you're getting listened to and, you know, you're being talked to like, like you should be and you having these really in-depth conversations and it just creates this, this uh, bond that you you just don't find out here really until you've actually like spent a considerable amount of time with someone probably even lived with them so that's that's probably the best way to explain how it begins you know like a relationship so funny thing is i think most people think well you can't have a deep relationship when you're in prison because you can't be together and what you're actually saying is in many ways, you have an even deeper one because because of the way you have to right have conversations with each other and wow yeah yeah because nowadays I mean it's all about just jumping into bed with each other now right away and you know that you don't learn anything about a person by doing that um, so when you're forced to do nothing but actually get to know one another, you know, on a, on a pretty deep level. Yeah. It cultivates a, a whole different kind of bond. Interesting. Do you, do you find dating now really difficult? Oh, well, my track record's not that great so far. Um, I am, I am, seeing someone right now and uh it's it is difficult because i've learned that i because of my experiences i'm a very difficult person to to get along with i guess um especially for someone who's never never experienced the severe like discipline I guess mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I am a very I'm very particular you know like I want I want things a certain way because I'm used to making things happen right. the way I want them to happen so when it comes to someone else in the picture, it's like they have to jive with me or we're going to be button heads. And it, it makes it kind of difficult. Mm -hmm.